Routing. Love it or hate it, it's a necessary part of web development. If you have a URL, it needs to point to something. And we've seen a lot of different ways to do that pointing. Back in the day, we used to have a server that would return different HTML depending on which route you went to. But as the web has modernized more and more, the expectation is as you hop around your web page, that you don't have to load new HTML as you go from one route to another. But in order to do that on the client, things had to get more complex. And we ended up with some interesting choices. I'm not here to say React Router is bad. It's not. It got us through so much. I am here to say file-based routing is bad, though, because I, as much as I love Next.js and even respect a lot of what Remix and Svelte are doing, I found that file-based routing makes it easier to find what you're looking for, but harder to do what you're trying to do as soon as the use cases get more complex than individual pages with single IDs. I'm not saying you can't do great things with file-based routing. I'm saying that I feel like it gets in my way more and more as I dive deeper into application-type user experiences. Once you have things like complex query params, it gets even worse. And since all of your route definitions exist as files, not as configurations, you end up losing a lot of type safety too. Because TypeScript has no concept of files. It's just one big TypeScript system. So it can't really infer the types off of another file just because it exists. It has to import from it in order to do that. All of these limitations have resulted in not great type safety experiences inside of these file-based routing systems. And God, don't get me started on query params. I could do a long rant about how React Router destroyed the way we use these words by changing what a query param is. Anyways, we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about an individual who also had all of these problems. And rather than complaining about it on Twitter like I do, he actually took the time to try and solve it. And along with a bunch of other really hardworking contributors, Tanner Lindsley has introduced a very, very exciting new router. So without further ado, let's take a look at Tanstack Router 1.0. Tanner is not just a great developer, he's also a pretty solid video editor and just creative nerd. So I always like to watch his reveal videos when he does something new. So let's take a look at this one. All rights reserved on Bandcamp, rip. I don't know how nothing else has all of this. <laughs> like it, it seems so obvious once you see it. Type safe route completions with params that are type safe. Like this, a lot of things have, but what he didn't really show here that I think is just as big is that he's using the Tanstack router dev tool. <laughs> Built a whole tool set for tracking your Tanstack router developer experience and debugging weird edge cases because when your routing gets complex, you need good tools to figure that out. And obviously he built those in because he's Tanner Lindsley, he's not gonna not. Tanstack Router. In case some of y'all don't already know Tanner, he also created Tanstack Query, which you might know as React Query, as well as Tanstack Table, which you might know as React Table. He's also working on Tanstack Form and a few other really cool things. I'll be sure to update you because there's a couple more that aren't even listed here yet. But we're not here to talk about any of those. We're here for the router because I am genuinely, genuinely really excited for this project. As we saw a bit of in the video, it's type safe and powerful, yet familiarly simple. Built in data fetching with caching and search param APIs to make your state manager jealous. Because you know the router even has one of these three, much less all three. Feature rich and lightweight, 100% type safe, yep. Tanner always provides these really elaborate kitchen sinks for his projects. Don't take this as you have to use all of these features to benefit from Tanstack router. And certainly don't take this as this level of complexity is necessary as you use the project. This is more to showcase all of the cool things you can do rather than showing off the exact right way to use this project in a simple example. So let's take a look at this 
absurd kitchen sink example that Tanner provided us. We start by defining a new router. The router has a route tree, which importantly is code gen. By generating the route tree, we're able to have much better syntax and ergonomics as we define things and also have the direct types without multiple chains of inference. You're also able to opt out of the generation, which I think is really cool. I also wanna go through and see if on here he has more info on the code gen. Interesting. So is this file-based routing then? Interesting. That's cool. So remember before how I said Handstack Router is kind of a response to file-based routing? Keyword there is kind of, because with the code gen stuff they've introduced, you actually can do something very similar to file-based routing, which is really cool to see. Something I want to try quick here is change this to something else. And did it just fix itself? Yeah. So if I'm understanding correctly, this is running in the background and it's making sure that the route you've defined here is matching the file name. So if I change this to dashboard users dot random. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's snappy as hell too. Okay. <laughs> did not know it did that now. That's nuts. <laughs> And we're just getting started. There's so much going on here. I'm going to opt for a simpler example, and then we will move to these more complex ones. So here is a simple example with no file-based routing. This is the bare minimum quick idea of how Tanstack Router works. So here we have React, React DOM, all of the usual client-side React stuff imported as you would expect. And we have the Tanstack Router dev tools as well, which I, as I mentioned before, really handy way to keep track of all the things that your app's doing. We have the root route, new root route component. Here is the component that is the root. And in here we have the outlet as well as the Tanstack dev tools and two links. We have the index route, which has the parent of root. It has this path. And here is the component for its actual contents. That, if you're curious what outlet is, this is when you have a child to your route where it goes. So if you have this as the parent, the root route, and then you have a component in that route, in this case, function index returns these things, this will now appear inside of outlet and its parent. We also have the about route, which still has root route as its parent, path slash about, component, function about, same deal. Now we have a route tree where we're adding these children. We have the root route, we've added these two children to it, and the router takes this route tree and also an optional preload behavior. In this case, it's intent, which if I understand correctly, means when I hover over those links, it will preload them in the background. We've also declared a module with this type definition. This is a really cool trick because it means when you import Tanstack router stuff in other places in your code base, everything will be type safe. So you don't actually have to do like what we did with upload thing where you pass the generic of your router to stuff and have to import from your custom version. This is effectively overriding the internal type definitions to use your router's definition, which is huge because now you can just import directly from Tanstack router and have things behave the way you would expect. We also have like, this is just the typical React render stuff. We grab the root element and then we render this there. We wrap it with the route provider. Router is this router. Now we have Instack Router with all these things. If you've already used a lot of React query, this shouldn't be too unfamiliar. The big difference is that we're creating these routes outside of the JSX and the JSX is a child of them, but we still have the ability to compose them. Other routers have leaned into JSX as the thing that describes the behaviors or have leaned into the file routing as the way to do that. Tanstack router is just JavaScript in the sense that you're writing your route definitions and JSX just happens to be what they return in some cases. I like this a lot. It feels much more, I don't know any good word for it other than like, it feels like I have more ownership of this, much more control and the ability to change behaviors if I need to for different various dynamic use cases. And this is just the routing side for which route goes where. There is so much more, especially once you start involving React query, server-side rendering, location masking, scroll restoration, data loading, and all the things around that. The data loading stuff in particular is nuts. We have lots of different ways to do it. So when you create a route, you can give it a loader and whatever this returns is now content that the route has access to. You can either call it via the use loader helper, I'm assuming. God, the more I scroll, it's just insane how much stuff this supports. These are one of those rare instances of docs that you're going to get smarter as you read them because there's just so much thought that went into it. Not like you're going to better understand how Tanstack router works, but you're going to understand why these decisions were made and why Tanner built this the way he did. And I really need to do a deeper dive on this if I want to go deep in all of the crazy data loading stuff. That could be its own separate set of videos even. But I want to showcase some of the crazy things Tanstack Router does. So let's do that with the kitchen sink example from the homepage. In the previous example, everything was inside of that one file, but you don't have to do that. In fact, you can actually do traditional file-based routing. How does that work if everything needs to be in that one file? Well, they do some code gen as well. We hop into here 
we see all of these different routes that either have these dot name patterns or folders as well. And I'm assuming I could put all of these in a folder named dashboard and it would behave how I would expect. We were just playing with this and there's some really cool stuff. Like if I try to update this file route to be something else, like dashboard users slash other, it auto fixes itself because the CLI is running in the background. Yes, there's a CLI for your router and it is reading your routes directory and generating not just the correct file paths for each of these routes when you export them. Not only is it going to generate these names and these file route exports for you properly, it's also going to generate this entire route tree file, which will give you both type definitions as well as the route manifest that you use to run the whole project. Super, super cool stuff. Well, let's actually play with this app a bit because there's a lot going on here. First, in the root, we create the router. We're importing the route tree from the route tree gen file that is generated with the CLI. We also have a default pending component. So this is a generic spinner when things are loading. And we also have a default error component, which can even take the error that a page throws. Yet another really cool thing that Tanstack Router handles well is when a page errors out. It could be because something on the page threw, it could be because one of the data loaders threw, but having a consistent way to get an error from your routes is really nice. And being able to write a generic component that takes that error and does something with it or shows it to you in some way, super, super handy. We also have context. In this case, we have auth that is undefined. And by doing this this way, we're able to add that context later on as it makes sense. And we also have the default preload behavior of intent, which again means if we intend to do something with a bunch of crazy code underneath, like for hovering over a link, we probably want to go to that. So it'll preload that page. So when you click it, it shows up faster. Next.js does this as well. Declare module. Yep. This again to get those types everywhere they need to be. Now we have our app. We have a loader delay. We have pending milliseconds and pending min milliseconds. I think this is to, again, simulate really slow stuff. Tweak our sandbox setup in real time, yes. And now we have a bunch of tailwind, of course, a button for changing all the loader delays and our main render. So we have the app, strict, nothing too interesting here. And in here, we should also render the router provider, yes. So this is just always going to be overlaid on top. The router provider is where the interesting stuff happens. This is the actual router. And we're passing all of these values in because we're configuring them from here. I could also, for the sake of demonstration, scrolling is annoying, delete all of that. All that is now hidden. Let's browse away. I also click the little Tanstack router button to see all of the route definitions and everything going on here. Might even be easier to open this up in a new tab. Will that? Cool. That's really handy. So here's the project. Here's the dev tools. And we can see the current router state is loading false, transition, yada, yada. But if I click this, you'll see it switch to true, then false again. And you can see all the different routes that this route currently matches. You can do this as well. You can see it's part of root and then dashboard. You can go to invoices and see that this is part of root, dashboard, then invoices and all the places this data comes from. As you see here, we're on slash dashboard slash invoices slash six because we're on the six invoice. But this isn't that complex of something being computed there. Let's find a page that has more complex stuff going on. I'm sure one of these has, oh, here we are. Just sort. What you might be noticing here is that those query params are not formatted in a way you're probably too super familiar with. Users view equals and then a bunch of percents and shit. What's going on here? It's actually one of my favorite Tanstack router features that I've been waiting for for a while. What's going on there is some very, very complex search param management. If you're familiar with search params, it's the things that come after the question mark. It's useful for keeping track of a lot of different state. So why don't we use it more? Well, it has some gotchas. Specifically, it doesn't really have a way to do nesting because it's just key equals value. The value has to be a string or a number. It can't be an object or something nested. He's handled that for us. As he said, you've been hearing a lot of use the platform lately, and for the most part, we agree. However, we also believe it's important to recognize when the platform falls short for more advanced use case, and we believe URL search params is one of them. Traditional search params always assume a few things. They're always strings, they're mostly flat, that they're being serialized and deserialized using URL search param, and that that's good enough, which it is not. The search param modifications are tightly coupled with the URL's path name and must be updated together, even if the path name is not changing. Reality is quite different from that, especially when you're building complex things like search interface. You don't want to reload the whole route every time you add one more character. There are many ways to serialize and deserialize with different trade-offs. Also super important. Yes, there is a lot of good stuff here. Mutability and structural sharing. Every time you stringify and parse URL search params, re referential integrity and object integrity is lost. Again, like that sucks. You don't know if the things have changed because it's a new object every time you deserialize it. And like, if you want values that aren't a flat key value pairing, like a nested value or a date time or a lot of these other things you might be putting in the URL, URL search params is just going to give you a bunch of strings. So it's really nice that they have focused on getting this right. And one of the most underrated features when you use search params properly is this guy here. You can command or control click a link and it will open correctly in another tab. I use this so often. I already have a whole video about why query params are great and super underrated. This is just pushing them way further. So check out that video if you haven't already. Know that they're doing this really well here.
JSON first is a big part here, where basically anything that could be JSON serialized can be dropped into this, which is great, like arrays. That's not something you could do before. And they handle the serialization and deserialization for you, as well as the deduping changes. So you don't have to worry about things re-rendering when they don't need to. Very, very handy. Also, something he hinted at in the video, validation and TypeScript. Since all the query params are being run through Tanstack Router, they can also be validated with something like Zod, and you can have type definitions for which search params a given route should or should not have, as well as validation functions to reshape them and make sure they're the way they're supposed to be, and even include defaults when you do this. Very, very handy. Yeah, there's so much little stuff in here that nothing else does, that this does incredibly well. Like no one else has done built in validation for the things in your URL because everything else's URLs just have string key values and nothing else. So nice. So nice to have this built in directly. So here we see this one new invoice button. It goes to slash dashboard slash invoices param invoice ID three. Let's put a new user here. So we'll do link and we'll say go to user link. I'm going to rip the class names just so that it looks just as good. Looks great, doesn't it? But you'll notice we're getting a type error. It's because right now it's not linking to anything. So we need to make this link to something. So we'll say link to equals string. And it auto completes because again, it knows all of the routes in your project because those are all type definitions that it's able to consume and use. Absolutely huge. We want to go to a specific user though. So we'll do that. We're still getting a type error. Why are we still getting a type error? It's because we haven't put the params in yet. And this route needs to know the user ID. So if we put user ID, I'll say seven as a string. We're still getting a type error because it actually expects it to be a number. So I'll switch that to a number. And now go to user will bring me to the right place with the correct URL. So nice. I can't believe nothing else had this before. If you know Ethan Nicer, he created the Beth stack and has some really cool content on his YouTube channel. He actually created a project called Next Type Safe URL that tried to code gen a lot of similar behaviors, but I've never seen anything do this at a router level as a built in. And it's so, so cool to see. And Ethan's actually in chat and just pointed out that he was heavily inspired by Tanstack Router when he built Next Type Safe URL. Super cool stuff. So we get some of these parts in other projects if we put enough effort in, but having it all centralized in a single existing router is just so, so cool. From the type safety of the routes to the first class search param management to the data loading and better caching patterns, I'm sold. This makes a lot of stuff so much better and I'm hyped. But we need to talk a bit about how we can use this though, because as y'all know, I'm pretty heavy on my Next.js in my server components. So where does this fit in there? Let's take a look at the SSR tab and get an idea of how they feel about it right now. Server-side rendering is the process of rendering a component on the server and sending the HTML markup to the client. Client then hydrates into a fully interactive component. There are two flavors, non-streaming where the page is rendered and then sent to the client and the client reruns all the code to hydrate or SSR where the critical first paint is rendered on the server and sent to the client a single HTML request. And then we send serialized data for updates to the client over time. And then the rest of the page is then streamed to the client. This guide will explain how to implement both flavors of SSR with Tanstack Router. Non-streaming SSR. Yep. And as was hinted at earlier, there is an interest and arguably even a need to create Tanstack Start, which would be similar to Solid Start or Svelte Kit, where it's a whole frameworky boilerplate wrapping a lot of the cool work being done here. Rendering the application on the server. Yep, React DOM, render to string, the good old classic. What do you guys say about streaming? It is really cool that they got streaming working for this. I wasn't sure if it would make it for the 1.0, but you can create an async promise and render to pipeable stream your content and respond with that in order to get content to your user. That's dope. That's really, really cool to see. I need to address the elephant in the room. It's a pretty big elephant. It has a triangle on it. It's named Next.js. I will not be moving off of Next anytime soon. And if you didn't notice, all the examples in here were Vite based. So am I even going to use this? Well, I do actually hope to. There's a lot of use cases that this makes a lot of sense for, for me. For something like upload thing, this might not be the best fit because most of our pages are pretty simple. We have like, I think, six routes and most of them have zero to one parameters. But if we were to build some more complex dashboards, maybe a page where you can search through your files and filter things, or God forbid, an admin panel on a different route on the same project, it would be pretty cool to take a sub route of my Next.js app and dedicate that to Tanstack router. Just do the double bracket with a triple dot and dedicate a given route to Tanstack. And now you can have all of these benefits for a subset of your application. I think this makes a 
ton of sense. And I'm genuinely really excited to get to try this stuff out. Gotten word from the team that while it's not necessarily an intended use case, it should totally be supported. And they've already had luck doing this with projects like Astro. I will say that TanStack adoption is going to be an interesting ride because a lot of the people who should be using it are currently on React Router and they would have moved to something else already if they had a big enough reason to. And making a router swap is not easy. It's pretty difficult when you have all of the behaviors of possibly years, if not decades of your application baked in into these weirdly placed components all over your code base. But if you're starting something from scratch that's really client heavy, this makes a ton of sense. Or if you have a really dynamic page in your existing application, dedicating a subroute to using this stuff seems really cool. I think for something like TanStack Router to succeed, incremental adoption is essential because your router is one of the scariest things to screw with. And if you get it wrong, ugh bad times. Thankfully, it looks like that's a totally viable path with what they've built here, and I'm genuinely really excited to play with it more. If I was building a new client-side heavy app today, and I needed anything in my query params, bet your butt I'm going to be using TanStack Router for that. But most of what I do is really, really server heavy and benefits a ton from server components. And to be clear, I'm not saying you can't use TanStack Router alongside server components just that it's not the intended use case at this point in time. I expect these things to get more and more interoperable in the future, and I'm excited for that because I wanna push this really hard. There are so many good ideas here that I want to see the rest of the web embrace. Huge shout out to Tanner and all the people who have been contributing. I know crutchcorn has been showing up a bunch in chat too, making sure I know what I'm talking about because as you probably noticed, I haven't played with this much since the original beta and it has changed a lot since. One more fun note before we sign off. I actually contributed the first server-side binding for TanStack Router way, way back over a year ago. I'm sure the code has been dropped since, but uh, I'll find a screenshot to sneak in here because it's a point of pride that I had some, even though entirely minuscule, contribution to what's been done here. It's such a cool project and I want to highlight it for those reasons. Thank you guys as always. If you want to hear why I have so many problems with Next's file-based routing, I'll pin a video in the corner here describing why. Good to see you as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace nerds.